Hey you all, Farmer Jesse here. It looks like this outside. So what better time to talk about seed propagation than now? Actually, it is a really good time. I have to propagate seeds when it looks like this. So today I wanna to focus on seed propagation, plant propagation. Uh, one, should you even do it to start? Uh, what you need on a very basic level, some of the considerations, um, and just some general thoughts about seed starting. Now, I should say that this is a huge subject, so I'm not gonna be able to cover all of it here, but I wanna give some general advice and some guidance and any other thoughts that you have, especially if you have a lot of experience, please leave them below. Those comments, I think, help people who are beginning farmers to be able to watch these videos and go and read those comments. So if you have any good insight, leave it down there. Otherwise, uh, let's do it. All right, so let's just kind of quickly go through all of what you're kind of gonna need to think about when it comes to propagating your own seeds. First thing is the seed itself. Now, this isn't where I would start. You're gonna have to digest all of this information at once, but just let's just take it apart and then kind of look at each section. Seeds, seeds are really important. Now, one of the things that people do often when they're thinking about starting their own seeds and doing their own transplants is that they get really excited, especially with new farmers, we did this too, getting really excited about the heirloom seeds and the kind of different varieties, uh, the non-hybrids, all open pollinated, that's great. Some of these seeds though, depending on the purveyor, may not perform very well for you. So, I'm not gonna call out any specific seed people in general, but I will talk about some of the ones that we like and that we use personally that we get high quality seed from and that we're really satisfied with. This is by no means all of them, but there are others that we've never got to use that we know are great. Uh, Osborne Seeds, we hear really great things about them. We hear really great things about Territorial, but Johnny Selected Seeds is one that we use a lot. High Mowing is one that we use a lot. And Fedco, those are kind of our three main seed companies. We get really reliable seed from them. Good germination rates, uh, consistent to the variety. So sometimes uh, we've ordered from different companies before, French breakfast radish for instance, and then we get like a purple turnip mixed in. It's gonna happen a little bit. There's, it's a natural thing, right? You're dealing with seeds, but you want to deal with professionals that are dealing with those seeds. So um, I do recommend tr not diving into some of the more esoteric varieties right away and sticking with some of the more well-known companies to start, um, just to start. You can always try some of these other ones. Just your, the bulk of your order should really, in my opinion, and feel free to argue and feel free to disagree, um, should come from a company that is that you can trust, that we use and we trust that other growers have used for a long time and trust as well. Soil mix. This is another big part of starting your own seeds. We, for years, we made our own soil mix, right? And uh, this year we decided to try Vermont Compost's Fort V potting mix. We'd heard good things, but also I went and visited my buddy Pavel Ovechkin at Pavel's Garden up in uh, Louisville, outside of Louisville and I saw some of the most beautiful starts I've ever seen and he was making it with Vermont Compost Fort V. And just for comparison's sake, you can look, I'll just show this little clip real quick. There is the Fort, the Salanova lettuce started with Fort V. You can see it's all pretty uniform, everything's kind of growing the same rate. And then this is an old mix that I use that we always make. Um, it's a mix that I made and you can just see that the difference is kind of striking. The variation in the size, the variation in the germination, um, it's a lot of different things. And we're really good at germinating lettuce. This is gonna be the next thing we talk about. The, the potting mix makes a huge difference. So that's just something to think about. All right, germination. Germination is a big deal because you're spending a lot of money on seed. If you just look at your base seed cost for a 128, that's a 128 cell tray, of Salanova lettuce, it's over $4. $4 for a Salanova tray. So if you don't have good germination in there, 
and you have 10 trays, I mean, you could lose, you know, $20. Half of it doesn't germinate. So germination matters. And germination is, you can build a germination chamber, right? There's a lot to this. So I'm, gonna, I'm getting to my should you even do it point. But the germination chamber is essentially just a chamber that holds in heat and you can put it, put it basically you can put a thermostat in there and you can adjust the heat. You can uh, add a humidifier of some form. There's many different kinds of like low tech humidifiers. And what that does is that it gives, you can choose the optimal germination temperature for that variety. Lettuce doesn't like it over 75 degrees. It likes it more like 72. Peppers don't like it really under 80 degrees. So there is some variation there. And I'll show you what we do. We we'll don't always do this in the house in the summer. It's just that it's too cold to do it in the early spring. You can see here, I have all of these on a heat mat. This is peppers and tomatoes. There's some basil and some arugula and a couple other things in there. And I put the things that take the longest on the bottom right on the mat. So that's all peppers. I love putting peppers on the bottom. They love high humidity and high heat. So I put those on the bottom. And then I put a layer of you know, tomatoes right over top of that. And then I have some other things right on top. And what that does is it traps in the humidity. That's why I have that blanket over there. And then it also heats it up. And I have a heater underneath it, just a basic heater that's kind of keeping that room a little bit warmer. And then a little bit of, um, and then that heat mat. And that's kind of all my additional heat. And that usually almost exclusively does the trick. Now, here's one thing. Same with the germination chamber, that if you're putting these in a dark place, you have to watch them. Otherwise, they will get leggy. I, believe me, that will happen. I don't wanna get into all the nuances between soil blocking and cells and all those things. I think you should probably start with cells. Start with some 128s and some 72 in cells. That's the number of cells within the cell tray. We, we just bought wind strips, which we really love. I'll talk about those in a later video. Um, we got wind strips from Never Sink Farm and we really love them. They're great, but they're a little bit more expensive. Maybe start with some cell trays, some general cell trays. You can get these from any you know, basic supply company. And I still love soil blocks. I'm not saying anything bad about them. I love soil blocks. But you know, focus on some other things first before you get into soil blocking. It's just a little bit more complicated. And I've done videos on it, so you can watch those, but it's just a little bit more complicated. Start with the simpler stuff. I did not touch on things like the paper pot transplanter. Uh, I'm testing these out this year, so I don't want to go, I don't want to say whether or not you should be doing these yet or not. I mean, I'm testing them out. They are only in 2019, as far as we know, allowed and certified organic just for the year, so we don't know if it's going to go beyond that. Uh, we're going to try them out just because I want some perspective on them, but, so I don't want to get too far into that. I just want to mention that, that if you really want to, you need to research the paper pot transplanter, research your crops to make sure that these, the crops that you want to use are good for this. It may not be. If you want to exclusively grow broccoli, it may not make sense to have a paper pot transplanter. Whereas if you want to do, you know, or if you want to do a lot more direct seeding, maybe better to invest in a good seeder than it would be to get a, you know, paper pot. So I don't know. We'll get back. We'll talk about paper pot in later videos, but this is, uh, you know, just kind of giving you a general overview of seed propagation and some tips and some thoughts on it. You're going to want a greenhouse of some form. Let me show you what we use. This is 12 by 12, and we pump out a ton of food in here. Uh, I would open it up, but it's kind of cold out, and I don't wanna, we have a bunch of tomatoes in there. But, all right, so I just wanna show you all real quick, shooting this like several hours later, but I just wanted to show that, put this in there because I think it's important. Just the sort of space that we're working with here, we just potted up all these tomatoes, but, um, it's pretty small. I've got a fan there for aeration. I turned off so you could hear me. Um, yeah, so this is, we set up all these tables. There's only one level. I think if I would do this again, I would actually build kind of a stair step down here and then have a one level on the ground and then maybe two levels on this side. This is the Southern side. So that would have been the North side. This would be the Southern side. And then also one other thing I would do is put more of these barrels in. These are just barrels that we painted black and filled with water. And essentially, I don't have any on the north side, uh, 
which is fine, I mean, for the most part, but, you know, having those barrels underneath there would, helps to, it's just mass, it's just a thermal mass, so it just keeps heat in. I also have just a little space heater. You can see that? And I just turn that on for cold nights, but for the most part, and let, that'll keep me, keep everything pretty safe up to about 25 degrees, surprisingly, in this little house. So, yeah, that's our, that's like our little bootstrap greenhouse. But it's totally inadequate. It's not enough. I've been complaining for three years that we need a bigger propagation house and we just have not made that jump yet. And it's because I can always find space elsewhere to keep plants until I need to get going. So this year, by golly, we're investing in a propagation house. But I go back and forth on whether or not I wanna put more money, or more time and more energy into propagating seeds because the more I do the math, the more I realize, this said more a lot there, but the more I realize that uh, seeds, seed propagation, plant propagation is actually pretty expensive on the part of the farmer. It costs a lot of labor, watering, you know, keeping them watered, uh, moving them around, especially for our situation where we only have a 12 by 12 greenhouse for the moment, moving them in and out, just the whole seed starting, seed, all that stuff. It's a lot of time. And so, if, in my recommendation, I think if I was to give a recommendation to myself as a young farmer, like what would I do differently, I think I would order starts. Now that I've got a propagation house, I'm not as likely to do that because I've got a lot of experience with it, I've been doing it for a long time, but there's a lot of nuance to it. And I cannot, we just got a new sponsor on the podcast, so this is a full disclosure moment. Banner Greenhouses, and they do the most beautiful starts I've ever seen. I can do really nice starts. I can do my own starts. I cannot do them as consistently or as uniformly as Banner can. So every time I see their trays, I think, why am I wasting my time? Even if it's a few cents more per plant, it's worth it. And it may be worth it to hybridize, to do a little of your own, Right, like we don't have any reason not to do our own lettuces. We don't have any reason not to do our own, uh, you know, direct seeded stuff. Certainly, uh, anything we want to do in the paper pots, we can do all that here. There's no reason for us not to because we can. We figured out a good propagation system for those things. Things like early tomatoes. Maybe that's something you want to order. Anything in the winter time. If you don't have to manage your greenhouse in the winter time. That's great, like that's worth paying somebody a couple extra bucks to deal with for you. And that's what Banner is really good at. Maybe you have other propagation houses that you use, you feel free to leave those below. So ultimately I just, I think that, like I said, if I could do this all over again, I'd probably spend my time working on my farm and not managing the plants and then slowly build up to that. This is something I think Jackson, uh, my partner in notillgrowers.com, he wrote a good blog post about that for the banner post, and it's excellent. It's a, it just has to do with looking around and thinking like, does this make sense for my farm? Is it slowing us down? Can we be more profitable by doing our own transplants or is it actually costing us money and costing us time? Those kinds of things are really important. So just look at whether or not you're make your, you could do your transplants for cheaper and with less labor, but ultimately, if you're starting out, do those first two years, get a little capital investment, it's expensive, right? It's not cheap to buy your own starts, but think about it. I mean, I, that's the one thing I think I would change, is I would, at least the first two years, I would order all, all or the vast majority of my own plants. I would also say, avoid hardcore seed saving. Seed saving is awesome and you should always do a little of it. We save seed every year on various things from sweet potatoes to tomatoes. Uh, we love seed saving. Do small, start small. It's complicated. You know, certain diseases like early blight can survive in the flesh of the seed. Can't be killed by the fermentation processes required to get a tomato seed out. You have to think about those little things. So just start small on your seed saving don't buy too many heirloom seeds and yeah and then think about buying some other plants that's kind of my recommendation as always i will take your recommendations and your advice and your criticisms all of that stuff that's all important to helping small farmers start 
Other than that, you all, uh, don't forget about the Patreon page. The Patreon page helps us to do these videos, helps us to do the podcast. If we want to do a second season, we need to get the Patreon page up to $1,000. That's patreon.com slash Farmer Jesse. The link is below. Uh, all right, you all. Other than that, thank you for watching. We'll see you next week. Bye.